Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be taking a look at Peppermint OS version 9. Well, another Linux distribution, although this one's a real hodgepodge of various different components from different desktops. I think we have some LXDE, XFCE, GNOME, and Linux Mint, or should I say the Cinnamon desktop. Yeah, quite a mixture really. I think they're moving away from the LXDE desktop, moving towards the others. Although, does it really matter it's a huge mixture, as long as it looks consistent? And indeed it does. It does actually have a consistent look and feel throughout. Now, the difference with this Linux distribution, it's aimed more for internet usage really, although it does have some games and uh, other smaller applications pre-installed. Surprisingly, a minimal version was offered, although it had no effect. I did try the two, although I have not looked at them side by side, I would say it's pretty well the same. So. Yeah, minimal installation of it doesn't do anything. And by the way, things are progressing with my decorating in the house. That lot behind me, finally getting cleared out and returning to its rightful place downstairs in my lounge. So end is in sight and perhaps I can do some more videos when it's all finished. Let's start with a few things I have open. So Microsoft Word Online, ooh dear, we don't really want to see that in a Linux distribution. Well, no, to be honest, as I said, this is aimed at more internet usage, this Linux distribution. So we do have links to Google Drive. I suppose, what was their other option? Google Docs? Yeah. But there is a locally installed document viewer, so you're not dependent entirely on internet usage. Does my own corporate account work on this? Well, apparently it does, but we do have multi-factor authentication enabled, and it didn't do that multi-factor part. So... No, I could not progress any further. So we do have VLC Media Player installed, so you can play either locally installed or internet files from here. In terms of memory usage, it is relatively low at 380 meg of RAM in use, and we do have Linux kernel 4.15. So this is based on Ubuntu 18.04 long-term support, and will be supported for the next five years. So, yes, until 2023. And they offer both 64 and 32-bit versions of the ISO file, so they are catering for older machines, which is fair enough, considering their distribution is lightweight enough that it can work on older machines. I'm not quite sure about the colours in these close, minimise, maximise buttons, they're very bold compared to what I'm used to, but I suppose that is actually my only complaints about the theme really, the rest of the look and feel does actually look perfectly fine. Although there are a few different Themes pre-installed on the system, various iterations of the dark and light looks, so a few different options, the default is red, but you've got some different highlight colours, so, yeah, that's nice enough, simple but looks okay. Let's put it back to the red dark, and they have offered a few different wallpapers on the system. By the way, the launcher is the whisker menu. So yeah, it's got that uh, expandable feature there. And we have the option of going into the settings menu as well as shutting down the system from those buttons along the top. Peppermint control center. It's just fairly basics, really. Dropbox integration, uh, catering for that internet usage. Another thing catering for that internet usage is this ICE tool, desktop integration for web apps. It allows you to create a shortcut for a single internet page. Let's say I want to go to YouTube. So I provide ICE with a name, an internet address, the menu to put it under, an icon. Um, I didn't really look through these icons before doing it, but I have used ICE in the past. Um, I think probably just for simplicity, I'm going to have to take the one that's there. Yeah, anyway, let's take that icon. Oh, use site favicon. That's a good option. So apply. So that should create a shortcut and instead has come up with an error. So what's going on here? That seems to have worked okay. I'm not sure what the error was about. Anyway, that's the idea of it. So we have a browser shortcut directly into YouTube and I don't have the address. So I've got a proper full screen version of the application. I have included an option to install an advert blocker. But when you look at it, what it's going to do is modify the slash etc slash host file, which is a pretty crude way of doing advert blocking. It's, it will have a detrimental effect to DNS lookup speed. 
I mean, realistically, if you want to do advert blocking, track blocking as well, you're better off looking at something like a DNS server on your own network. Doing it on a DNS server is a lot quicker than using a slash etc slash hosts file. But for simplicity, this is the easier option to take. In terms of the other applications on the system, we do have a few basic games. Graphics, where it's Pixlr for the image editor. Internet, where they've gone for Firefox or web browser, swapping out Chromium this time, so they keep changing back and forth. A Skype web client, shortcut to Skype. This is all using ICE to create a web browser shortcut. Multimedia, it's VLC for media player, as we've seen. Office has a few shortcuts that we've seen already. And settings, yeah, there's not much else really to say there. But one final thing to mention on the features side, if you press Alt and C, it highlights where the mouse cursor is. And very blatantly highlights where the mouse cursor is. And something else to mention before I finally finish this review. I think this is the Mint installer. Let me just confirm that. Yes, the Mint install, I thought I recognized that. So they're pushing more for flat packs and DEB packages instead of snaps, which is what Ubuntu pushed for. That's most of the major features covered that I really wanted to talk about. In terms of achieving its objective, I think that Peppermint certainly does. It's aimed more for internet usage. So you've got the internet tools, you've got the ability to set up shortcuts to websites. Yeah, maybe it's not necessarily how everyone wants to work, but they are providing you an option to work that way. Not quite the extreme that Chrome OS have gone with everything being on the internet. You do have some locally installed applications here, so it does provide you a balanced usage. So you're not entirely dependent on having an internet connection to use your system. And it's very light, fast and responsive. So it's certainly an interesting Linux distribution, perhaps not one for me, but that's just because it doesn't fit what I really want out of a computer, or out of a main desktop. But if it fits your idea of predominantly using the internet, then it may well be a distribution worth considering. Well, thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.